grateful that we are in 2020. Yes. Yeah, somebody said it's like you going to your eye doctor and says that I need a 2020 vision. Yeah. So I think this year we are going to see spiritually 2020. Amen? Yes. How many of us got it? How many of us got what I've said? That was we see spiritually 20 on 20. We would see clearly spiritually. We would be able to be bold. Amen. So our spiritual eyes would be open. I believe that is what God wants to do and that is what is preparing us because the next decade it's going to be a great, great, great one. Amen? Amen. Well, let's just pray before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for such a privilege to be in your presence. Such a privilege to be called your son and your daughter. Such a privilege that we can come and sit at your feet to worship you, the King of Kings, the Lord of all. Father, we thank you for that. We don't take it for granted. There are millions that don't know you. There are billions that don't know you. But God, you've chosen us and you've revealed your greatness to us. You've revealed your mercy to us. You've taken away the pain of sin, the curses that were upon us. You've given us eternal life. You've given us hope. We are not just living to count days, but we are living with hope. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus. We submit our lives now into your hands, God. And we pray that, Holy Spirit, you would cause us to understand your word. You would cause us to be able to know, the, have a knowledge of the will of God regarding our lives, regarding the area of prayers. I pray this in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. that there will be a break forth that river in our lives, that there's going to be like a miracle, that the, 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 the dams of prayers will be broken within us in Jesus' name, so that that river of living waters will be able to flow and bring healing on whatever it touches in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, bless us this evening. Mm -hmm. Bless us this evening. Let there be a, a, a transformation within us. Let there be a shaking within our spirits in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Bring us closer to you, God. I believe if we want to see success in our lives, then we need to be closer to you. And it is only prayers that can bring us closer to the heart of God. Mm -hmm. Father, do this in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, this will be our last uh, session on prayers. And mm -hmm. I would really want us to talk on these four parts. Yes. The five important uh, parts of prayers. I would summarize it, that is uh, waiting on God, watching, listening, meditating, and fasting. We'll start by what? By waiting on the Lord. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? What does it mean to, to wait, to wait on, on God? Is it that God doesn't speak when we move? Is it that God doesn't speak when we, we are involved in other activities? I think to, 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 to bring it to a point where a layman will be able to understand is that we need that stillness to be able to hear the voice of God. We need that stillness in our spirit. We can be doing other activities, but our spirit is still. And we can be still being quiet, being like in a solitary position, but our mind is just harboring the whole world with thoughts. So what does it really mean to wait for the Lord? It means that our mind should come to a standstill, to a, a position where it is our spirit having dominion, not our minds, not our imaginations. Amen? The Bible says that we renew our minds. Why do we renew our minds? It's because the mind is the, like, there's a part of our mind that relates to our ability, our intellect. So when we search for something, when we are searching for knowledge, it comes to the level of our minds. But when we go to the stage of a revelation, that comes now with our spirit. So that is why we have to renew our minds with the word of God. So that we don't just base our whole living or thought process 
based on what we see or what we hear. But we be bring our thoughts to that place where it is based on the word of God. Amen? Amen. For example, if I turn on the news and I hear of an accident or a year of like an economic meltdown, what happens? That is information that I've received. But now, how do I process that information? If I'm a spirit person, I'm going to say praise the Lord because he is my provider. But if I walk in the flesh, what happens? Fear comes in. And then I start thinking, if this is the reality, how do I go over it? So now our minds start roaming around, looking for where to get defense, looking for where to get some, some, some assurance, looking for where to get something to hold on. But because we are spirit beings, we have to renew our mind with the word of God. Because when I go now to the word of the Lord, and I purposely, intentionally decide to renew my mind, then I see the Lord as the one who provides. Amen. Amen. So now when I'm waiting on the Lord, what happens? My mind is still there. It's still roaming around, thinking about perhaps what I had at the job site, perhaps the challenges in my family. I'm just trying to see some how I can come out with some solutions to these problems. That is my mind going all over, just moving all over the whole place. Now I'm subject now to the control of my mind. But now because the Spirit of the Lord relates with my spirit, not my mind. I have to bring my mind under control. Amen? Now, I bring my mind under control through what? Through the word of God. That is the only tool we can use to bring our minds under control. So now, I take a scripture and I start thinking in line to that scripture. The Bible says the word of the Lord is what? It's a light unto my path. So now I take the word of the Lord and I start meditating upon it. I start thinking upon the word of God. I start looking at the word of God and applying that word to my situation. Perhaps because of the economy, perhaps I've lost my job. But now I take the word that says, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. Perhaps I'm suffering from hopelessness, insecurity. Then I go back to the book of Psalms. It says, I am your shepherd. I hold that as, a, as, as, as an assurance because the Bible says that the, the promises of the Lord, they are yes and amen to those who believe. Amen. So I hold that as an assurance. It's a promise that God has given me. And I start thinking over it. I start pondering over it. And I assured you, as you keep meditating, as you keep waiting on the Lord, the Holy Spirit is a faithful spirit. Amen. He shows up instantly. Because the word and faith has been brought together. And it is an ingredient that is so appetizing to the Holy Spirit. When he sees the word and he sees that our faith, it's like we, we, we entice him to come. And he comes now in your situation. Automatically what happens with your mind that was roaming over the place? Your mind is now subjected to the word of God. You brought your mind under control. You brought all those thoughts that were bogging you under control. You brought fear, insecurity. You brought it under control. Through the word of God. Amen? Amen. And now that you have it under control, you now start soaring like an eagle. Wave upon wave of glory, depending on how far you want to go. So when we wait upon the Lord, it consists of other elements. We cannot wait on the Lord without the word of God. We cannot wait on God without his word. His word is what opens the door for us. Let me even give an example. How do we worship a king that we don't know? How do we worship God that we don't know? If we really want to worship God, then I need to back my worship with the scripture. I need to go like in the book of Revelation. The Bible says that the radiant that comes out from his face, the brightness that comes out from his face would be the light in heaven. Then I start thinking, what a mighty God. 
that just the glory from his face would be light in heaven. Look at the darkness outside. It says that the beauty, the glory, what an awesome God. He is so pure, so holy. There is no impurity. There is nothing that can hinder the light that comes from him. It pulls me to worship. Because the Bible says this. It says that I would honor my word above my name. So whenever we invoke the word of God, or we stand upon the word of God, it's like we invoke the Holy Spirit to come and manifest Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the word is the principal thing. If we are waiting upon the Lord, if we are fasting, if we are meditating, if we want to listen from the Lord, it is the word. Amen. So our prayer life is like us telling him his word. It is us bringing the word back to him. Saying, Father, because you have, you have promised these things unto us, fulfill them. Mm-hmm. He was not under duress to give his word. He gave it willingly because he loved me. He loves you. He gave it as a promise to us. And he said, I will fulfill it. So prayer is us humbling ourselves to know the word of God and to bring it back to him. Amen? So when we know the word of God, we stand by the word of God. We apply faith by saying that God, for sure, it is you. And I will come back to you. Amen? Yeah. Take, for example, our provision. Because that is the area that we can be easily touched or really affected. That we can feel the pain of lack, right? When you don't have, you really feel that pain. But the Bible says that I am your provider. I will provide whatever you ask in my name. You see, that's a big promise. Like if I tell my kids that I will provide everything you ask, if it is in line with my will, it's a big, big responsibility. And it takes a lot of commitment to be faithful. <coughs> if somebody is a hundred years, just imagine every day you ask for breakfast, ask for lunch, ask for supper. That is a lot. And God is faithful. So, but the thing is, it's not just because we receive every day. But it is looking behind the miracle of you receiving. We are here today. Think about the air that you breathe. Is it just because you were born, when you were still in your mother's womb, you were breathing? Do we just take it like part of life? Like an occurrence that it has to happen? No. It is because of God. He is the giver of breath. He is the giver of life. So there are certain things that when we start looking at the details, going back to the word of God, then it brings us to a place of worship. It brings us to a place of complete surrender. Amen? I don't know if we really understand if I'm, my explanation is clear. Let me put it this way. There are things in our lives that we have been taking for granted. Like our daily bread. Like our health. We take it for granted. Because we just feel life is it's like, you know, you are born, you live this number of years, and you exit the planet. No. For every second that we live, it is a gift from God. Mm-hmm. 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 And we need to acknowledge that. We need to live a life that we acknowledge these things. And once we start acknowledging it, then our life is completely dependent on God. And when we depend on God, what else is there that God will not provide us? We need to come to that place of acknowledgement that even the least breath that we take, it is from the Lord. You see, prayers is not just that communication with God. 
No, it's beyond that. If I go to the Prime Minister today to you know, ask for something, request for something, there is one thing that goes with me. Expectation. I want him to answer me. I'm not just going there because he's a Prime Minister that I just want to go and you know, just meet him. I want him to answer me. But how do we treat our waiting, our prayers with God? Do we just get up in the morning and we fulfill righteousness? And we say, I've committed this day. When we pray, we must and we must expect that God would reward and God would answer us. When we come with, to him without expectation, then that is just like being religious. Amen? Amen? We must expect. And that expectation is what I would term it as dependent on him. Because when you depend on somebody, then you expect that person to react. It's like you having a sick person before you. The only hope you have is Jesus Christ Amen. to heal him. Is that's the only hope of a terminal disease? The doctors have tried, it's not going. And what do you have? Jesus. Expectation that Jesus will show up. Amen? Amen. So when we wait on the Lord, there must be that ingredient of expectation. Look at it. The Bible speaks of Peter. How many times have Peter and John been going to the temple? Many, several times. But there was this cripple at the gate. The Bible says that the cripple, I think they saw Peter and John. He saw Peter and John. And he expected something from him. There was that expectation. He needed some arms. He needed some, some change money. But because of his expectation, what happened? It pulled the attention of Peter and John. You see, our expectation would pull the presence of God. Because this man had, there was no hope. He was already down, down there. He was already a cripple for how many years? Being at the gate of the temple. And Peter said something. He said, silver and gold have I not had. But I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The apostles, they had the faith. But the man was expecting. So when we expect something from the Lord, he would manifest himself. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's something I really want us to share on waiting, on like these five areas. I said I was going to compress them and then as we, we share, we'll just be touching one part and the other. I want us to read from John 5. Verse 19. Jesus gave them this answer. We're talking about the authority of the Son. He says, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing. Amen. He says, The Son can do nothing by himself. Let me ask this question. Who is Jesus Christ? He's the Son of God. He is God. He carried the whole image of God. The, he carried everything about God was in him. Everything we can think about God was in Jesus. But the Bible says what? He did nothing by himself. Though he was God, he did not just walk on the streets and say, you lame man, rise up and walk. No. He did not just see the storm and say, you storm, be still. No. Mm -hmm. The Bible says something. That he can only do what he sees his father doing. Where did Jesus see the father doing these things? 
It is in that confinement of prayers that the Father reveals his will to Jesus. It was when Jesus was praying that he could see the heart of the Father. It's when Jesus was praying that he could build up that heart of compassion for the lost. Are we compassionate? Do we love the lost? It is when we pray. It is when we come to that place of prayers. I don't mean, you know, having prayers here and there. I mean having that consistent fellowship with God. That consistent fellowship. That, that you make up your mind and you say, Lord, I'm going to do this. We must discipline ourselves when it comes to prayers. Because things will come to distract you. Amen? So we must be disciplined. We must build that fellowship. And it must be consistent. And once we have that consistent fellowship with God, we start seeing the heart of God. We start seeing the heart of God. We start, our hearts now blend together. Our feelings now blend together. Our passions now, they blend together. Amen? Then we can hear God. Then we can hear his voice. But if the Lord should speak, would you know that that is the voice of the Lord? We go back to the Old Testament. When God spoke to Samuel, Samuel did not know because there was no intimacy between him and God. But Eli knew that that was God. Because Eli already had a relationship with God. So in order for us to know or to hear and know that that is the voice of God, we must build that relationship. And that is why I said that it has to be consistent. Because if we, if we say, okay, I will seek the Lord for January because it's the beginning of the year. February comes, March. We feel somehow, you know, relaxed. We don't care about that. And then God also is a God of seasons, right? Yeah. He shifts also to much. And then when he speaks, it's like, who are you? Because you are not following up. So we must build that consistent fellowship with God. And once that consistent fellowship is there, then we start hearing the voice of God. We start hearing the voice of God. When he speaks, we know for sure, very clearly, that that is the voice of God. Amen? Amen. You see, Jesus had that relationship with the Father, though he himself was God. That was an example for us. That we should see that though he was God, he still made time. He still invested his all in prayers. You see, when we pray, one thing that I've realized is this. At times we get bored. Because to me, I always put it this way. I said, the gospel is practical. We must look for ways that can accommodate us. The Bible says that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. You know, let me put it this way in my own life. At times I really get bored to pray. Honestly, I, that urge is not there. That, that move is not there. But once I take the word of God and I start reading the word of God, and I start meditating upon the word of God, I see the promises. I see the promises. I start meditating upon it. It's now like a light onto my path. I was struggling to walk through a dark path, but now I see light. And then out of this sudden, the Holy Spirit kicks in and encourages me. And from meditation, I now come to that place of prayer. I now come to that place of intercession. I now come to that place of claiming his promises. So we must not relent the aspect of meditation. Let's take the word of God. Let's think about it. Somebody will say, well, I can't find meditation in the Bible. I haven't found it also. I haven't found anything as meditation. But when I take the word of the Lord, it is like food to us. I think over it. How does it apply to my life? How can I fit it in this situation? And I allow the Holy Spirit to minister to me. Spend time. Let's spend time. It can be just one scripture. Just one scripture. Let's think over it. Think over it. And then we get the will of God. We get an understanding of his will and his purpose for our lives. 
Let me read something here that really. Let me just read from first, from Colossians one verse nine. Then we see the benefits of meditation. It says, "For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continuously ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will, through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way." Look at this. It says, "What bearing fruits." In, good, in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power. Amen? Yeah. When we come to that place of meditating, it's like Paul here talking about the knowledge of the will of God. How many of us have that deep knowledge of the will of God for our lives? We cannot get that knowledge from going to a psychologist. We cannot get that from any other source other than seeking it in the word of God and seeking it meditatively. That God show me your will. I want to know that I, have, I want to, to know your will for my life. I want to know your will for this situation. Taking the word of God, sitting upon it and allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. The once that is revealed, it is like Paul saying that that had been their prayer since they heard about what God was doing in their midst. That the knowledge of his will be made known to the church in Colossians. And once that knowledge is made known, what happens? It says, pleasing God in every area and bearing what? Good fruits in every work. So when we, we receive that from our prayer life, we start doing the will of God. Every work now that we'll be doing will bear good fruits. Amen. Amen. There are some works that we do it out of carnality, out of the flesh. We don't see the fruits. But God wants us to bear fruits that would last. Amen. We'll just talk on fasting a bit and then we'll pray. And believe in God that God would do something within us. Because I believe that when that stirring, when that search, that hunger is within us, that is a fertile ground for God to move. You see, we live, <coughs> we live in a society where at times it, it gets a bit difficult to fast. How many of us can bear witness to that? Because of our activities. We work, we have other commitments. So it becomes very difficult to, to allocate a certain time to say, I'm going to fast. There's one thing I've experienced here. I've lived in Africa, I've lived in Europe, I'm living now in North America. There is more grace here. Mm -hmm. There is more grace here. Back at home, you can just decide to fast for as long as you like. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have that commitment like here. But the same God there is the same God here. Mm -hmm. The thing is, the state of your heart. Why are you fasting? What is the essence of fasting? Why do we do it? Because it's a religious obligation. Jesus said, these ones cannot come out except through fasting and prayer. Do we have some situations that we want God to deliver us from? Do we have some difficult things in our lives that We've prayed and prayed and it's not going. Then we turn to fasting. We look at the life of a person, Daniel. He fasted for 21 days. And God did mighty things. We look at Christ. He fasted for 40 days. The Lord did miraculous things. He came out from that wilderness of fasting. Started his ministry. And the Lord was with him doing miracles. Fasting is part of our Christian work with God. And what does fasting do and why should we even get into that? Number one, fasting, because we deny ourselves of food, principally food. We deny ourselves of the things that would keep the flesh strong. 
So when we deny to empower the flesh, and we decide, because number one, fasting must go with the word. We cannot be fasting and not studying the word. How many of us understand that? We cannot just decide to, to just go not eating, and then spiritually we are not feeding the inner man. So when we are fasting, we put aside food, which is for the flesh, and we take the word of God, which is for the spirit. So we want to empower the spirit man. And we want to suppress the physical man. So fasting helps us to be alert. Fasting kills the flesh. The things that are of the flesh, fasting kills it. Amen? Amen. So when we are fasting, one, we can deny ourselves of food, I guess some people say they deny themselves of uh, you know, social media. Whatever that you think is becoming like a lord over your life. Once you deny yourself of it, that is not enough. You have to fill the void. And the only thing that you can use to fill the void is the word of God. Amen? Amen. The point is, we must come to a place that we, we approach the things of God in a very practical format. Otherwise, we would miss it. We can look at fasting in a more spiritual way, which is still good. But how practical do we bring that spiritual way that we can apply it in our lives and get the results? Amen? So we deny ourselves the things that we are so attached to. It can be the social media. It can be the food. Some people say they would, they would fast their snack. I don't know how you look at it, but that which holds you, keeps you behind. When you give it up and you take the word of God. If I was eating three meals a day and I was reading my Bible once a day, I would read my Bible four times a day because I've given up physical food. I've given up my dessert. I've given up my breakfast. So I would spend more time in the word of God. Amen? Amen? When we do that, then we would see the results. But if I, because of my busy schedule, I decide to, to fast without the word, then there is nothing that is sustaining the spirit man. There is nothing that it's, you are not, you are not being enriched, you are not being edified from within. Because what are you feeling your inner man now with? Then the fast now becomes a burden. The fast now becomes a burden. It, it weighs you down. It, it pulls you down. But when the inner man is being fed with the word of God, you can be driving, you put a preaching, you put on a tape, and you listen to that preacher, you listen to that message. It builds your inner man. Now faith starts building from within. And you get strength from within that you can... You can, you can go on for a longer fast. Amen? Yeah. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. One thing that I'm so privileged, and I keep saying every time, even when I, I worship God, I say it's a privilege to be called a child of God. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege to come before God. It's a privilege to stand. We might not understand it. He took away our sins. He took those things that bound us. There are people they can't sleep. There are people they live on pills every night. But he has given us sleep. There are people they live a life of hopelessness. Why do we have a lot of drug addicts? Something happened in their life. They lost it. And they just decided to fill that void. I could have been one of them. But because of the grace of God. Because of his mercies. We can, we can name those things one after another. But when we talk of prayers, it's the biggest, biggest privilege that God has given us. That we can carry requests and come before the king of you. He will not 
notches of sin. It's a blessing. And I pray that we'll not take it for granted. That we'll not take it for granted. He can send angels on earth to do the work that he wants to do. He would use us because he wants us when we get to heaven to lay crowns at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. To cast crowns, to say because of you. This is what I did. He wants us to live a life that is fulfilled. We cannot do this if we don't pray. We cannot do this if we don't wait on the Lord. We cannot do this if we don't listen for Him. We cannot do this if we don't fast. If we want to have the heart of the Father, then it takes this component. Jesus did that. He listened to the Father. He fasted. He waited upon Him. He meditated. If we want the same results like Jesus. And Jesus said something. He said, greater works are we going to do. Greater works are we going to do. If we follow his footsteps. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray. And I believe that God wants to do a new work in our lives. Everything starts by prayers. Everything starts by prayers. And my desire is that God birth a passion. Not just praying for your own needs, but standing as an intercessor. Standing as an intercessor. A man that will stand the gap. You see, when we talk of being an intercessor, to pray as an intercessor, people feel like you have to be called to be an intercessor. No. Every one of us is called to be an intercessor. When we look at the streets of Calgary, when we look at the political situation in Canada, when we look at what is happening globally, what do we think? What do we feel in our hearts? Who is going to bring this burden before the King of Kings? The Bible speaks of Abraham. God called him my friend. He was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He whispered it to the ears of, you know, of Abraham. Abraham listened. He heard God spoke to him. That the sins of that place, they are terrible, I will destroy it. That was a friend of God. God has called us friends. God is speaking, he is speaking today. I don't know if we are hearing. And I believe if we are hearing the voice of God, he's saying the same thing that he said to Sodom and Gomorrah, or about Sodom and Gomorrah. The sins, the sins of the nations, they are like an abomination before. But who would stand as that intercessor? Who would stand as that one man, Abraham, crying that God don't destroy this place for the sake of the righteous? Have mercy. That is what prayer is about. To stand the gap. To stand the gap for our nation. How far can we go? Do we have that power? Do we have that brokenness? You know, I remember of this mighty man of God, who I have born. They asked him the question. They said, why is that in your, in, your, in your programs, in your outreach, there are millions of people giving their lives to Christ? He said, the secret is prayer. He says, when I'm on this platform praying, there are people below interceding. There are people down there interceding as I'm up praying. They are like people lifting up the hands of Moses. Before the enemies, I want us to ask the Lord that God give me a passion to be a prayerful person. Not just praying for my needs. Because most of the times we in the church, we just based on praying on our needs. We don't look outside to see what is happening. We don't see the state of sin, the state of unrighteousness in our communities. But I believe God is calling some people right now to stand and say, God, I pray and I pray unto that reign of righteousness reign. I will not cease from disturbing heaven. Mm -hmm. I want us to pray. Just ask the Lord to do it in your life. Just ask him. Ask the Holy Spirit to rain that, that tongues of fire over you.
that tongues of fire that you would pray and pray and pray and would see these things happening because God has promised us. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. I stand upon that promise, Father, today. I pray that, God, you will release a measure over our lives. You release a measure of passion that God would rise up with a burden to pray, would rise up with a burden to cry, oh God, to see nations safe, to see nations come to the saving knowledge of God. I pray that in this room tonight, God, raise men and women who would Stand that gap for your glory in Jesus' name. I believe is there is something that heaven needs. Heaven needs intercessors. Heaven needs intercessors. People that will stand the gap. People that would cry and cry and cry until heaven releases that miracle. Father, I pray this evening, let that be burned in our hearts in Jesus' name. That we'll go back home, Father, with a burden to pray, with a burden to cry for you, to you, O oh God, so that we see our nation. Coming to the feet of the cross. Coming to the feet of the cross. Lord, let everything that we have learned, let us put it in practice. Let everything that we have learned, oh God, let us have a desire to see it manifested in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breathe upon us, Holy Spirit. We need that power, we need that power, we need that power. Breathe upon us, we can't do it ourselves. We need that power in the name of Jesus. That power from on high. John said, yes, I baptize with water. But there is one who is coming who will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire and power. I pray for that baptism of our lives in Jesus' name. That as we stand in that place of intercession, we will not just pray, oh God, with our own power. But we would pray with the authority from heaven. We would pray with the authority from heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, release that touch of our lives now. Release that touch of our lives now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I just want to say this. I don't know if it pertains to you. But receive it as a word of encouragement. When we look at the man Gideon, the Bible says that because of the suffering that came over Israel, because they departed from God, there was poverty. The people had to leave their homes. They were living in the caves. Can we imagine? Because they had departed from God. The Philistines, they were, no, the Amalekites, they were after them. Can we imagine that Israel had to stoop so low to the enemy? Because they had departed from God. There was poverty. They were living now in caves. A man, Gideon, <coughs> the Bible says that he was in a wine presser. Threshing grain. Do we, do we thresh grain in a wine prison? He was afraid. There was that fear, that fear, that fear. When you lost your sense of purpose, when you lost that sense that there is a God called Yahweh who is with you, you start doing things in places that you're not supposed to do. But he called Gideon. When he called Gideon, Gideon started complaining. The Lord is calling somebody. But that person is just looking like I'm the least of the least of the least. Gideon was from the least tribe of Manasseh. And he was the least from his tribe. But the Lord called him. He complained, I don't have any strength. The Lord said, go with the strength that you have. Let this word be a word for you and for me tonight. Go with the strength that you have. You might have lost your personality. You might have lost your dignity. But the Lord is saying that go with the strength that you have. Amen. The enemy might have terrorized you to the extent where you are threshing grains in a wine press. A place where you are not supposed to be. But the Lord is saying that go with the strength that you have. And what happened? Gideon gathered 32,000 to go to war. The Lord said, no. If you go with these people, they will take glory. If you go with 32,000, they will take glory. God took how many? 300. Mm -hmm. And they did a marvelous job. Mm -hmm. 
It is not through your strength. It is not through my strength. It is through the power of the Holy Ghost. It is through the power that comes from on high. Mm -hmm. As we pray and as we wait upon the Lord, we can do nothing through our strength. Mm -hmm. That power comes from above. Like Gideon who was picked from that place. The Lord released strength into him. And he went forth. And did the work of God. We are like the Gideons. We are like the Gideons. I would say this because like most of us are immigrants, right? Even if you are born here, we as the church, we are like the Gideons because we've been pushed so back to the wall that we are barely surviving. We don't have a voice again. We don't have any say. We've like lost our sense of direction. But God is saying, go with the little strength. Go with the little strength. That little strength that is still there, go with it. I, the Lord, I would magnify and manifest myself. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can we trust the Lord? Yes. That as we pray and as we wait on the Lord, we do this consistently, we shall see the mighty power of God. Amen. 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 We can testify of mighty things that God is doing. And one thing that I keep seeing is that it starts with prayers. When people commit themselves to prayers. When people commit themselves to seeking the Lord. You see, one thing I love with God is that he speaks. I go to some, because I, I, I work in, in, in the construction sector. I go to some people's house, especially the Hindus. They have a nice, well-decorated place. You have a God there. They offer sacrifices. But that God doesn't speak. And one told me, he said, Edwin, you are such a nice person. I will make, I'm thinking of making you my God. And I was like, making me your God? I said, but I'm, I'm a God. So we have a God who speaks. So God is a God who would speak to us as we pray and give us directions. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will bring intelligence to us and start releasing certain things that we don't even know. And I encourage us to pray and pray in tongues. Because we pray the mysteries of God. If we want to break the stronghold over this land, then we have to pray more and more in tongues. Because the things that hold this land in captives, they are mysteries that the mind cannot understand. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let me just give a short testimony to encourage us. There was this country in, in Africa, Uganda. It was totally lost. They had almost 70% infected with AIDS. Economically, it was done. No hope. They had dictators over dictators. They ruined everything, the infrastructure, everything in the country. It started persecuting the church. The church, like, they were running in the bushes. And they started praying. They started praying. They started praying. And the Lord started speaking. Mm -hmm. And as the Lord spoke to them, the Lord started pointing the strongholds of the nations. Were they not praying? They were praying. They had been praying. But God had not spoken. And God had not revealed the stronghold that held that nation in captivity. And when God started revealing it to them, they now started aligning themselves now to the purpose of God. And God did a marvelous job. So when we pray, God speaks. And as he speaks, we now start aligning ourselves to what he has spoken. Amen? He speaks in you. And we align our prayers with that. And look at that country today. The year 2000 breaking, the year 99 breaking 2000, the whole, they had it like they rededicated the nation back to God. The president was there, and the churches were there, and they dedicated that nation back to God, Amen. denouncing the sins of their fathers. Amen. They have never had oil. Mm. They have oil in Uganda. Mm. The economy has gone way up. The issue of AIDS is like history. Because of what? Some people were praying. And they were praying and listening to God. Amen? So we might look at ourselves to be very small like Gideon. But I assure us, 
that God is looking at us as mighty men and women of valor that he wants to use. So let us take that challenge as we get into 2020 that we'll do marvelous things for God and for his glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I think we have done for the day, right?